Good morning, this is Stephen Siebert. Welcome to Dulcimer Diary. That's a cool tune. It's a dulcimer classic. I think of it as an anthem, <laughs> a dulcimer anthem. It's called Wellen, W-E-L-L-Y-N. And that was written by Robert Force, otherwise known as Bob Force. I love this tune. I learned it early on. Um, I call it a dulcimer anthem because I think it it calls us all. Uh, the idea of the wild dulcimer. Not the domesticated one. Not the one put in little boxes. Um, but the wild dulcimer, which really is the... Well, let me show you. <laughs> this is one of my favorite books. In fact, it's one of the first books I ever got. I think it was the first book I saw, and I believe I saw it before I ever touched a dulcimer. In Search of the Wild Dulcimer, Robert Force and Albert Deshay. Please help me pronounce Al's last name, if you can. Wow, I got this thing in my hands from the Kenton County Public Library, I think when I was 16, I might have been 15, but I think I was 16. I checked it out more than once. And what it really is, it's like a an adventurer's manual, you know, from back in the day. It kind of shows you how the instrument works and it encourages you to do it your own way. And um, so whenever I think of uh, the tune well, and I think of this explorer, uh, 
personality, this drive, this search. My mom found this book years later at the library. Um, I guess it was falling apart and they had put it on the sales table. So I think I have the very copy. Dedicated to Richard Farina and Paul Clayton, who taught us through their music. That's cool. And there's a forward. Uh, there is a certain magic about the dulcimer. It's hard to define, but if it's touched you, you know what it is. Keep this magic alive and your music will take on form and substance. It will grow and develop from within. You know, they um, have so many neat ideas in here. And I'm thankful for it. So thank you, gentlemen. Unfortunately, Al passed away many years ago, but Bob is still out there. And um, you should go to his website. He's got this book on there uh, where you can look through it on the website. You should look up on YouTube the word Wellen, W-E-L-L-Y-N. You will find a YouTube video of Bob playing this by himself. But of course, what you really need to hear, and I think Bob would agree, is to hear them play this together. And um, on Bob's site, there is a recording you can get where they are playing live. Uh, David Schnaufer once told me there's nothing like those two playing live. And uh, he told me it was a shame I couldn't hear them play together, you know, because Al had passed on at that point, but and I never met him. But this tune well, and it, it, it takes two dulcimers to really hear, you know, what I first heard. And I first heard it on the Pacific Rim Dulcimer Project, an LP I got from that same library. You can hear that on YouTube. And uh, it's track number three on the LP. You can get tabbed to this, and there's various versions out there, but this this is the book that went along with the Pacific Rim Dulcimer Project. Neil Hellman, Michael Rugg, Bob Force, Al Deshay, Bonnie Carroll, Michael Hubert. I never met Michael. I may be messing up his last name. But uh, the tab is in here. There's this great picture of uh, them playing together. And you hear people play this a lot. I'll tell you, some of you, I want you to understand kind of where I think I'm at in this. First of all, there are people all over the world playing things like dulcimers, and they don't care if you, what you call it. You get strings over, you just get some strings and you put frets under it, and you leave out the notes you probably don't want anyway, and and you've got a, a you got a sound body that runs the whole length of the thing. You know that's that's the definition of a as of a fretted zither. It doesn't have to be diatonic. In some parts of the world, they went chromatic more than a hundred years ago. But um, you know that's the academic definition. What's the heart definition? Somebody wants music, and with simple tools and simple ingredients, they put together a simple instrument. And, and many of them have a drone, and many of them are missing the wrong notes, which is very convenient. And it's just a basic part of humanity, you know. Um, man, I'm going to get lost on this whole thing here, but I, I let, me, let me wrap this around a different tree. <laughs> I really think... This tune for me just reminds me that it's okay to do things your own way. Don't let anyone tell you how to enjoy this instrument. I'm scattered this morning. I'll admit to you guys, I have been, um, I have made dulcimer diaries that have not made it to you because it's just one thing after another went wrong. And, um, I'm going to make this one no matter what. Was I getting ready to do a whole sermon on Wellen or what? I don't know. But I think um, 
I think I said I want to look at the tune a little bit uh, more. I, I I love this idea of barring. Um, I think that you can look at this tune and, and see a whole different way to play and come up with tunes on your own that are very similar to this. Bob does this cool thing on the B part. Um, let's see. Um, and I can't do it. He does a little picking and he might go out, out, down, down. I guess we'll call it out, out, in. Out, out, in, out, out, in. Uh, or he might go out, in, in, out, in, in, out, in, in, out, in, in. I know there were two that were the same direction. He puts that on that B part. I kind of strum my way through it. If I play this with other people, I throw in some of these other chords. I suspect he and Al were doing, but um, I'm scattered. Like right now, I'm thinking, what did I talk about and what have I not talked about? I'm just going to leave it at this. Go find this tune, learn it. What have y'all been doing? I went through storage and uh, got a bunch of dulcimer books out. And that's got me thinking about some old tunes. <coughs> I'm always so tempted to try to make these videos perfect. And then I always have to remind myself, I don't want people to take away the idea that everything's got to be just right, you know. Dulcimer. I am really obsessed with it lately. I go through phases where I get into other instruments or I go through different styles. But I'm always uh, in search of the wild dulcimer. One way or another, whether that means being a traditionalist or a, an avant-garde uh, performer. I like to do it all, which means I inevitably um, create fans and enemies all over. It's pretty exciting. And I'm not going to cancel on this video. I said something in the last video, I believe, about getting it going or one of the last videos, you gotta get something going. I feel like there's some real truth to that. You don't have to do it right. You just gotta get it going. You know? I just remembered what I was gonna preach about. <laughs> Here's how I see myself. I feel like I'm a bridge between, even though there's been a long run of dulcimer type players and there always will be, I feel like I'm a bridge between very two interesting groups. Um, I knew a lot of traditional and still do a lot of traditional players and modern players. I guess some of the more modern players, a lot of people call them the the revivalists, you know, they revived the dulcimer in a sense, and then they took it in new directions. Some of them took it in old directions too, but um, I got to know a lot of the people that are gone now and hear a lot of their stories and, and see their books and listen to their recordings, and see them play live and jam with them. And I've been doing this my whole life. Kind of, since I was 16, it's been a big part of it. And I feel like I'm a bridge person between the folks that came before me and you. And as I get older, I feel... I feel a responsibility but also a passion to let you know about some of the exciting stuff that's out there this this dulcimer and then the community that surrounds it 
and not just the community, also the the hermits who live in the hills by themselves, the the people who are mo modern and experimental and the people who are ultra traditional, the whole thing, the whole bunch. It's a fascinating story. When I first saw that in Search the Wild Dulcimer, the idea that there was um, a community of people, uh, people all over the world even, that were all about the Dulcimer. I just, boy, that seems so cool to me. So I, I just want to urge you guys to know there is some amazing history to this instrument. And there's amazing things yet to happen, and you are part of it. It may not be the most important thing in life, but it's a wonderful accompaniment, as Gene Ritchie said, to the more important things in life. And I don't want you to feel stressed out that you have to do it the way someone else wants you to to do it. I want you to do it the way you want to do it. And I want to thank you for being on this journey with me. Goodness gracious. You know why I don't do some of these? You know, I'll do videos and then I'll stop doing them for a while. And I, I just go, it's, um, I don't know what it is, but I'm trying to do one now, no matter what. Sometimes you got to do that in life. See you guys soon. Take care.